If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Declaring war on the New World Order. TruthRadioShow.com Shalom and welcome to the Dan Bedani Show on TruthRadioShow.com. So we are now into the book of Luke chapter 3 in our comprehensive in-depth study of this awesome book. So what we do, guys, we pray for wisdom and understanding. This is our specific Bible study approach before we even begin to touch the scripture. So let's pray. Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah, we come to you once again to ask you to forgive us for our individual sins and trespasses and anything we, you know, we can't remember that we've done wrong and make us pure before the Father. Father, we come to your throne to ask you to descend the Holy Spirit upon us to teach us this great wisdom. And today, the book of Luke chapter 3, to give us this great wisdom and understanding in your teachings, Lord, and fulfill us with the Holy Spirit so we know the scriptures, what they say, and what it means without any of our own interpretations, but your clear understanding. In your heavenly name, we pray for everybody here. Amen. So, guys, we also read the scripture in its context. We don't just read through this, guys. We read the scripture in context because context is key. We ex try to explain our best what the stuff means and everything else according to scripture, right? And we let the scripture interpret scripture. So when you seem to don't understand something, just keep reading. The scripture will interpret itself. That's uh, the awesome thing about the scripture. And we lean not on our own understanding, but, you know, let the Holy Spirit work through you. Plain and simple. So let's get into the Bible, guys. And we left off uh, chapter 2. Uh, which was an amazing chapter. It was a lot about Jesus when he in his younger years, learning, uh, going to the temple, asking questions, talking to people, and just amazing people with his in, 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 ever increasing knowledge. So it's just really, truly blessed stuff, really is. So we uh, go to chapter three, and if you don't got a Bible, guys, it's on the screen here. And if you listen to the audio edition of this, uh, it depends on the platform. Um, please open your Bible, King James, Geneva, or anything older, we always recommend. So anyway, guys, let's get into this, guys. And um, So, now in the 15th year of the reign of uh, Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being the governor of Judea, and Herod, being Tetriarch of Galilee, and a brother Philip, his brother Philip, Tetriarch of Etrunia, and the region of the Trichinacus, and Lysanias of the Tetriarch of Abilene. And I apologize if I butcher these names, guys. <laughs> anyway, Annas and Cephas, uh, being in the high priest, the high priest here, and the word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias in the wilderness. So remember, when we started off the book of Luke here, we learned that John is the son of Zacharias, right? Remember Zacharias, I'm sorry, Zacharias and Elizabeth? They were too old to have a child. And they prayed upon the Lord, and uh, Elizabeth is Mary's cousin. So Elizabeth and Mary became pregnant about the same time. So anyway, the angel of the Lord blessed um, Elizabeth with a child. And that child right there is John, which ended up becoming John the Baptist. And Zacharias, he didn't believe the angel, so what the angel did is, because Zacharias was a leader. He was a temple preacher. So uh, the angel, because he didn't believe the angel, uh, he dumbfounded Zacharias until John was born. So for nine months, Zacharias couldn't even speak a word out of his mouth. Then when John was born, he was able to speak again. As the angel told him how it would go down because he didn't believe the angel. Because the angel came for the message with God, you know. So anyway, and he came, and he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remissions of sins. Because remember, I was telling you in the last chapter, uh, sins where you had to offer a sacrifice, like an animal, uh, one of your best possessions, the animals of sacrifice, a blood remission for sins. So now here's John preaching that hey, baptism is a repentance of sins now. And as it is written, we mentioned this before, all right, in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, right? Now again, we have to emphasize all the time, every time we see this, that modern day churches say, oh, don't bother with the Old Testament. That's what they basically say, right? Well, you can't understand the New Testament unless you know the Old. Because not only John here, but Jesus himself, you know, in the, the apostles relentlessly say, hey, 
as it is written, referring to what? The Old Testament. So you need to know the Old Testament to understand the New. So instead of those people telling you, oh, just read Matthew through Gen uh, Revelation, I'm sorry, you need to read Genesis through Revelation. Sorry to sound redundant, guys. But and if you miss uh, chapters 1 through 2, uh, we got them on the playlist, yeah. So anyway, as is written in the book of the word Isaiah, the prophet, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So this is John the Baptist, you know, told everybody, yeah, prepare because the Messiah is coming. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough way shall be made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. So this is John the Baptist preaching us. The Messiah is coming. Well, Messiah is here, but he's coming. And then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him. So the multitude means a boatload of thousands of people came to John to be baptized, right? And John ran away. He screamed out, O generation of vipers, who hath warned ye to flee from the wrath to come? So, if you, you know, because I do my shows and everything, people say, oh, yeah, not really politically correct. You don't speak like a Christian. Well, I don't speak like a modern-day Christian, no. Because there's no room for political correctness in the Word of God. John the Baptist, Peter, Paul, Jesus himself, they, they didn't hold back. They told you exactly how it is, even if offended people. That's what we do here. We don't mean to offend people, but you know what? The truth must be told. And there's John right there screaming at these people. Oh, generation of vipers, you have been warned you to flee from the wrath to come. And bring fruit, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say what to yourselves, We have Abraham our father. For I say unto you that God is able to see stone, I mean, I'm saying, able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. So because people think they were from Abraham, they were they were locked in. You know, and we're, we're, we're descendants of Abraham. And John the Baptist says, yeah, good for you. <laughs> good for you. And it doesn't mean nothing. It doesn't guarantee you a space in heaven. And he goes on to say, and now also the axe is laid upon the root of the tree. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not good fruit is hemmed down and cast into the fire. So he has John with a little bit of parable, yeah, because you had to speak that way. And God led to, you know, made them speak this way so people of all generations can understand us. So you cannot possibly misunderstand us. Now, if you grow gardens and you grow trees, right, that have fruit in it, if, you know, like, just say you have a bunch of apple trees in the orchard, right? And if that one tree's not growing apples no more, what do they do? They chop that tree down, uh, we use it for firewood or whatever the case, and they replant a new tree. That's what they do, right? Then spiritually speaking, if you are not producing good fruit, you are that tree that's talking about, right? If you are not producing good fruit, what's going to happen to you? You're useless to God. And you will be hemmed down and thrown into the fire. That's hell. Plain and simple. And people say, well, I read the Bible every day. Well, yeah, do you? Yeah, all right. What good is that if you're not out there doing something for the Lord? What good is it to have all this knowledge and not share it to the world? There's people out there that know this Bible back and forth. They can recite it back and forth with no problem. But they sit there in their own houses or in the churches. They're not out there in any which way bringing the word of God to the people. That's a, good, that's a tree that doesn't give off fruit. That's called a lukewarm Christian. That you got to be spit up and chewed up because you lost your salt. We're supposed to be the light and salt in the world, guys. Somehow, some way, even if you can't speak, you know, write a blog, write something on your Facebook post, share a verse and explain it. Try to help, you know, bring the word of God somehow. You can do this. I don't care if you're locked in a wheelchair. Because if your tree is not producing fruit, hey, yeah, you can tell God I want your face more. I know your scriptures by heart. Oh, good for you, but you did nothing for me. You, I gave you all this knowledge and you've done nothing with it. It's like training the military soldier, right? In the military, right? They give you months and months or years of training, right? When wartime comes and you just go sit in um go sit in the office or something. You got all this combat experience and all this stuff, and you're useless to the military. 
in this spiritual sense, you're useless to God. If you got all this knowledge and you're learning, yeah, your heart's for God, but you know what? If you're not doing something for God, you know what I mean? What good are you? That's what John has told these people. Because these people go, well, hey, what the sense of Abraham? Well, what did he do? And the people asked him, saying, what will should we do then? What, what do we do then? And John answered and said unto them, he that has two coats, let him impart to him that has none. So in other words, if you got two coats, right? You see somebody without a coat, hey, here you go, brother or sister. Here's a coat for you. And he that has meat, let him do likewise. In other words, if you've got meat and the other person doesn't, split it up with him. Help your fellow brothers and sisters. Then came to him also uh, publicans to be baptized, and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? <coughs> and he said unto them, Exact no more than what you is appointed you. Just do what you are appointed to do, that's it. Don't do no more. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? Asking, you know, John, what, what can we do? And he said unto them, Do violence not to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. In other words, whatever you're being paid, be content with it. Don't do violence unto people. Yeah, you follow orders, whatever, but don't, don't you know, go do violence because you're a soldier or something, you're authority, right? Don't do violence to somebody... You know, it's not saying they can't defend themselves or stop bad people, no. Because a lot of times these, um, you know, they were doing bad things to people for no reason. Or because they had the power to do it, and they could. And he's saying, just don't do no violence to no man. Don't accuse anybody falsely, and just be content with your wages. And as the people were in expectation, and all men mused their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not. So they're like, wow, this, is, he, is he the Messiah? Is John the Baptist the Messiah? So John answered saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but the one mightier than I is com uh, than cometh. So he's saying, it's, I'm not the Messiah. There's one coming that's mightier than me. The delatcher of those shoes I am not worthy to loose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So John is basically just the doorway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, he's uh, the threshold basically to the door of Jesus. Say, so I'll baptize you in water, but Jesus one is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The Messiah. And he's saying, I'm even me, being, you know, because he was a prophet of the Lord, is uh, prophesied by Isaiah. Elias. I'm sorry. So he says, there's one mightier than me that's coming. And I'm myself, I'm not even worthy to latch it to shoes. <laughs> so whose fan is in his hand? And he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into the garner, but the chaff will he burn with the fire unquenchable. So him, this is him just describing Jesus. That he's going to burn away those sins. The fire, the Holy Spirit burns away all the evil. Being baptized with fire. So is there a, water baptism washes away the sins. And uh, the fire baptism just burns away the evil from it. You know what I mean? And John says, And many other things in his exhortation preached uh, he unto the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, being reproved by him, uh, for Herodus, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done. Added yet this above all, that he shut John up in prison. So he cast, he threw John in prison because he was kind of took up. He's baptizing like thousands of people, his own soldiers and everything else. The publicans and everything. So he, John just, I mean, sorry, Herod just threw him, which later on Herod became a king. Um, but yeah, you just end up throwing uh, John in prison, right? And now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying that the heaven was opened. So we learned about this in Matthew, Mark 2. So Jesus came to, this is cool, right? Jesus came to John, right? John's baptizing people left and right, right? 
Jesus came up to John, and John instantly knew. Now, mind you, John never seen him before. Instantly knew this was the, um, the Messiah. I, I, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. I think uh, because I, they were cousins. John the Baptist and Jesus were cousins because, uh, well, second cousins, I believe they're called, because uh, Mary and uh, his Mary and Elizabeth were cousins. So, yeah. So basically, when Jesus came to him. When he was baptizing everybody, he seen the Holy Spirit within Jesus. That's what I'm assuming here, because he, yeah. So anyway, and um, that w and explained better in, um, excuse me, guys, explained a lot better in the book of Matthew. So now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass, and Jesus also being baptized, he and praying, the heaven was open. So when John baptized Jesus, right, the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said. Thou art my beloved son, and thee I am well pleased. So imagine that, you dunk him under the water, pull him up, and this dove, a spiritual dove comes out, the Holy Spirit of the sky, and a loud, thunderous voice from God himself. This is my son, who I am well pleased. And Jesus himself began to, about 30 years of age, being, as supposed, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Hilly. Eli, I'm sorry, that's uh, it's way different. You, know, you notice the same names are spelled different ways in different books. Like Elias, it's a, you know, it's spelled a couple of different ways. Uh, it's spelled in different books, spelled a little bit different. Because you've got to remember these are comes from different people. So their spelling could be a little bit different and all that stuff. There was no correct, uh, back then it was no standard, you know what I mean? Uh, anyway. And uh, which what I'm going to do, guys, is... Um, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play this audio. Usually I read this by myself, but this is memorized a lot, mentioned bloodlines and uh, the last chapter there. And it's important when it says this one, we got that one, we got that one. Very important to understand. I know it sounds tedious, but very important to understand because there's a reason why it's mentioned. Because it shows you the bloodline, the family tree, the heritage, the gene, you know, the, the uh, all the, you know, the genetic all the way back to you know, Adam, that pure bloodline we're talking about. And it's distinct from, and it makes you distinct from the bloodline of um, Cain, which was polluted from the fallen angels and all that. Which was, that's a whole thing altogether. We've done many shows on it, spiritual warfare shows. But um, what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to pray the audio because I don't want to butcher these names. Usually I just read the stuff myself. But I tried to read this earlier, and uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to butcher everybody's name just about, and I don't want to sound like a fool here, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the audio from here out, and then after the audio is done, then I'll explain some more stuff here. So yeah, just bear with me here, guys. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Eli which was the son of Mathat, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Melchi, which was the son of Janna, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Mattathias, which was the son of Amos, which was the son of Nahum, which was the son of Esli, which was the son of Nege, which was the son of Maath, which was the son of Mattathias, which was the son of Semei, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Joanna, which was the son of Ressa, which was the son of Zerubbabel, which was the son of Salathiel, which was the son of Neri, which was the son of Melchi, which was the son of Adai, which was the son of Kosam, which was the son of Elmodam, which was the son of Er, which was the son of Jose, which was the son of Eliezer, which was the son of Jorim, which was the son of Mathat, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Simeon, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Jonan, which was the son of Eliakim, which was the son of Malaya, which was the son of Manan, which was the son of Mattatha, which was the son of Nathan, which was the son of David, which was the son of Jesse, which was the son of Obed, which was the son of Booz, which was the son of Salmon, which was the son of Nasson, which was the son of Aminadab, which was the son of Aram, which was the son of Esram, which was the son of Pharis, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Jacob, which was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham, 
which was the son of Thera, which was the son of Nakor, which was the son of Sarak, which was the son of Rago, which was the son of Phalek, which was the son of Heber, which was the son of Salah, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Arphaxad, which was the son of Sem, which was the son of No, which was the son of Lamech, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Mahaliel, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Okay, so yeah, like I said, usually I read this myself, guys, but <laughs> I would have butchered probably 95% of those names. And <laughs> it would have just been, uh, yeah, a disaster. So uh, the reason why, now, I've, I've lost count of how many generations. This is going back, just like uh, what this is doing. It's like, if you ever done a family tree, right? Yeah, obviously, you know who your father is, right? Your grandfather, your great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather, great-great-great-grandfather, so on, so on. All the way back as you could possibly go, right? That's where Jesus... Yeah, in the John there. No, they both go back all the way to Adam. Like I said in the last chapter. It's about bloodlines, you know what I mean? And it shows the, the everybody's mentioned here because you learn about a lot of these guys in the Old Testament, especially Enoch, right? Enoch, uh, which is two Enochs. I want to point that out, guys. Don't ever, please, don't ever confuse the two Enochs. There's uh, Enoch. Uh, the first Enoch was the son of uh, Cain, which was very evil, guys. He was known as evil Enoch the evil. The second Enoch that came along was the son of Seth, the grandson. I'm sorry, and he was also the great grandfather of uh, Noah. Enoch, this Enoch had a good one. He was a great prophet. He was the first one that was taken up by God. He, he didn't see death. Him and Elias, they didn't, do, they didn't, they didn't see death. That God took them up, straight up. So, but you know, a lot of these people mentioned here, a lot of great people that the Lord used over the years. And I lost count in the generation, should have counted that. But wow, it's, it's amazing. So, the reason why uh, they have to do this for, well, or God had to do this for, to show you, yeah, this is who he says it is. To show the authenticity of John, the authenticity of Jesus, and Joseph, and Mary, and Elizabeth, and, um, uh, oh, what's the name of his father there? Uh, Zacharias. So you can see the lineage all the way back to Adam. That's why this is very important. So and it's unfortunate, right? A lot of churches don't explain this. They don't. And in fact, I mean, when you do a Bible reading in church, they'll, they won't even, most of the time, they won't even go through that. I know it's tedious to read all those names and all that, and I have to use the audio to do that. But still, there's, it's important to do that. Because you've got to ask yourself, and you could go through every one of these people. Jacob, I mean, look at the, you know, what he did. Isaac, you know what I mean? Enoch, Moses, all these people that came along. Noah, you know what I mean? And uh, if you notice, there's a lot of Matthews still, I think. It's pretty cool. You know what I mean? Uh, just like, you, a lot of, you know, <laughs> pretty awesome. So when we actually read through the bloodlines, that's awesome stuff. But yeah, it does sound tedious on the whole, but when you actually examine it, it's like, wow, all right. And it's interesting to know, too, because it authenticates the... Um, you know, Jesus being the Messiah, it authenticates the prophet's prophecies. It authenticates John the Baptist as being a prophet as well. So obviously this is going to be a little short chapter here, but, um, you know, it's about 24 minutes here. Uh, but yeah, uh, just guys, you know, for your own homework, guys, take your time. And uh, you got your own Bible or go back and just pause or whatever. Just really read through the... I forgot I lost count again, like I said. I was trying to count the number of generations going back. But, um, yeah. Just go take your time. And it's amazing, it really is. Which I think is about 75 uh, generations or so. I forgot, lost count, whatever. But, man, um, this is just so amazing, it really is. So, guys, um, please take your time and go through this. Just read it. You know, open your Bible and just read every one of them. And there's a reason for this, guys. 
It's tedious, yes, like I said, and don't mean to start repetitive, but um, there's a reason for that. To understand the bloodline, so to understand, like I say all the time, uh, to begin to even understand the New Testament, you need to understand the Old Testament. Because the New Testament constantly re recites the Old Testament. Very important to know that. You know, so regardless of what the churches teach today, you need to know the Old Testament. Other than that, guys, uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, sorry, it's a short video here, but awesome stuff, guys. And um, yeah, thank you, Heavenly Father, for this great wisdom. And please always trust God's plan, guys. God's plan is better and 100% better than any other plan in the world. Nobody's plan is better than God's plan. So don't take my word for it or anybody else's word for it. Read it for yourself. And please check my shows out, guys, on truthradioshow.com. So basically, if you ever discover that my channel is deleted like YouTube likes to do, just go to truthradioshow.com. We're always going to have some way to broadcast um, one of our many platforms. Our social media links are all on there as well. Links to our spiritual warfare shows, our new shows, and all these special reports and everything else. There's biblical study series. So, um, yeah, again, truthradioshow.com. And thank you for joining us for this awesome book of Luke, uh, chapter 3. And we will see you for chapter 4. God bless, shalom, and you are the resistance against evil.